Hey, Steve Petrato here with Horizon Hobby. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your PC interface with your 350QX. Now, we're going to be using a 350QX3 in this video, but keep in mind, this system will work with all of the 350QX lines. So if you have a QX2 or the original 350, you will be able to do all this functionality. Um, the, I've already downloaded and installed the software on my laptop. Um, and so you're going to need to do that. And that. That's available on our website, so check it out there. You'll also need to make sure you have your USB programmer. If you don't, it's BLH7840. That's the part number. Uh, it comes with all the new 350QX3s. So if you have it, uh, you want to make sure you have that to plug in. All right. So like I said, I've already installed it onto my laptop. I've done the drivers and the actual software install. So it's ready to go. The first thing I want to do is hook up my multi order programmer. Now, it's got this little cable on the end of it here, and there's also that same cable inside the quad. You can see it right here. All I'm going to do is just kind of disconnect that, pull the uh, male side out of the way, and then we can grab the other side here and take my programming cable and hook it right up to there. Now, it only goes in one way, and I'm going to just plug that in. Once I've got that plugged in, I can go ahead and take my cable here and hook it up to my laptop. Now, in order for it to connect, you have to make sure you turn the model on. So we'll go ahead and just go ahead and plug the, the cables in here. And then we'll turn the model on. And then everything should hook up. It should jump to the next screen. It'll initialize all of the sensor information. So the first screen you're going to get is your sensor information. That's going to give you all your checks. So IMU is OK. Pressure sensor is OK. Compass is OK. GPS is OK. Speed controllers. Good to go. You're going to have your battery voltage here. This is a pretty new battery. I haven't charged it yet, so it's only 11.38 volts. You're going to get accelerometer data as, as well as your gyroscope data here. Um, you're also going to get orientation of your um, in roll, pitch, and yaw. Now, if your accelerometer data seems really out of whack or further away from zero, so you have zero, almost zero here, almost zero here, and a one on the z-axis with a magnitude of one, you want to make sure those are close to that. If you see, if I tilt the model here, if you see that they're pretty far out of whack in the 2.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.9, that means the sensor on board is actually not calibrated. And it should indicate that up here on the top uh, where, your, where your accelerometer calibration is. So um, you'll also see if I pick the model up, you'll see these uh, illustrations move. So if I pitch it, this one will move up and down. If I roll it, you'll see this one moving up and down. And if I yaw it, this one will move side to side. So I'm place that down on the table. Now we're on kind of a metal table here, so you'll probably see this yaw jumping around because it's using the compass data. Um, besides that, you have some other raw values down here just to tell you what's going on. And then the cool thing about this page is on the top right, we've got our uh, speed controller status and testing. You can also do ESC ID assignment. So if you've put a new ESC in your model and you want to re reassign it to the correct position, you can do that all here. Now, I have the propellers on. I wouldn't recommend doing this with them on normally, but just for the video's sake, just be, keep, be careful. Usually take the propellers off when you do any kind of testing on the bench with any kind of multi-rotor system. But um, I know that I know what the system's going to do because I've tested it already. So if I push the number one or the number two, you'll hear the props move. One, two, three, and four. All right, so the important thing here is to know that what you're doing is you're testing each motor. Be safe. Don't have it near anything or take the propellers off. And this is good if you've swapped out an ESC and you want to test it to make sure it's working before you go out and actually fly the model. The other cool thing that we can do with this is do ESC ID assignment. So if you completely swapped out an ESC and you forget if you put, let's say you move the left ESC to the right, the machine needs to know where that ESC is and it needs to assign it to that motor pod. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. What we're going to do is hit ESC ID assignment right here, and the bot, what it's going to do, it'll beep. And then on the screen, you're going to see a blinking blue circle around the motor that it wants you to actually physically touch. So right now it's telling me one, and I'm going to go ahead and do that and be quiet. So that's, that's I've just learned where the one position is. Now it's telling me to turn number two. We'll do that. And then we'll do number three here. It's telling me to turn number three. And then again, number four. And that was successfully done. It's just telling me to restart my 350 here. And we'll go ahead and do that real quick. All right, now we're going to move to the calibration menu. This menu is important for doing some of your major calibrations. On the right side of the screen, you're going to see 
the Sego 2 selection or GB200 selection. That's if you have the two-axis gimbal or our new three-axis gimbal. You can select which one you've got. Over here on the left, here's your calibrations. If you want to do an accelerometer calibration, you can just hit this calibrate button here. It'll do the accelerometer calibration on the table. But keep in mind, it's not the same as the flying calibration. Um, there's an instruction sheet there. You can click that. It'll give you a little pop-up window on how to do it. And then also for your camera gimbal, for the, G, for the Seago 2 only, you can hit that and the gimbal will go through a calibration sequence. It takes about 30 seconds. Um, and then we can also do our transmitter calibration here, but that's just, a, just an instructions on telling you how to calibrate your transmitter. Um, it pops up a little window for all your, all your information there. For the compass calibration, there's the, this link will pop you to the actual online instructions or you can watch my video through the GUI there as well um, through a PC interface. Uh, past that, we go down to our flight boundaries here, and this is what, out of the box, the model set to these default values. So 91 meters, um, this is geofence, uh, this is the external fence, so how far away you can fly from yourself, and this height limit is about how high you can fly. Now keep in mind, this system allows you to push it to about 2,500 meters, however, this radio system is not capable of going over a mile, so don't do that. Also, keep the model in line of sight as always. But the reason why we did this is so that you can select it far enough out so you never bump into a geofence if you don't want that feature. To do that, you can either punch the arrows here, you can go up or down, or you can set in a value just by double-clicking and setting a new value. Again, for the bottom, if I want to be able to go a little higher, that's set that way. You can hit Enter, or you can just click off. Now, in order to save that, you need to hit Update. The model will make a little beep. And now those are all updated. So the, now remember, this is also just the distance from home in AP and smart mode. This doesn't have any bearing on stability mode or agility mode or anything else. This only affects you in AP mode and in smart mode. All right, so that's your calibration menu. Real simple to do. It gets you to your major calibrations. Also has some nice videos on there for you as well. The next screen is the GPS information screen. Now this one is really best uh, done outside. Of course we're in the studio so we don't have a whole lot of information to show you but this graph essentially shows you uh, GPS signal strength as well as what satellites you're getting. So you'll see this light up as the model sits outside. You'll see the bars and this is the dB level of the strength that you're getting. Obviously the higher the level the, the stronger the signal. Uh, but if you're in an area with poor, with poor GPS connectivity, you'll be able to see it here. You can pop out your laptop and see what's going on. Maybe you're near a weird transformer or just a weird magnetic field uh, and you don't seem to be getting GPS, but this, this screen will tell you that. Uh, past that, if, you wanna, if you're outside and you want to see where you are, you can click on View on a Map and uh, it will go right to, um, right to the, it'll pull up Google Maps for you and tell you right where you are on the map. Um, past that, the next screen is Device Information. And device information just get, tells you what GUI or what PC interface version you have, uh, what firmware, so we're on 3.0 here, and when that was done, and then also just the ID of the model and the vehicle type. If you want to do a firmware update, this is the screen you would do it from. You would click here, and it would bring up a screen where you would find that file on your computer and just dump it in there. We could just search for the file here, and of course it would bring up um, all my documents there, so we can do that. Alrighty, that's about it. That's the PC interface in a nutshell. If you have further questions, please let us know. Make sure to check us out on uh, facebook.com slash bladehelis or, of course, on our website at uh, www.bladequad.com. Thanks, guys.